More jobs time. So, I finally, well, I think I worked for that, that, that carpet cleaning job for a long time. I worked for three years. But I worked other jobs while I was doing that, too. My next one uh, is UPS. Fun. I was an unloader. Yeah, I'd unload on the bitches. No, I had to go in these trucks. It was kind of, I was kind of impressed with their, like, systems. So you're inside the trailers, inside this huge megaplex of just conveyor belts and people working and stuff. Um, so I had to have this, like, piston-driven conveyor belt go inside this truck. There's a little joystick on the side. And, uh... And I, I pivot it so it goes more in, and you just have to unload these boxes just as fast as you freaking can onto the conveyor belt. And make sure the label's on top so the thing can scan it, and then it goes to the next step, which I actually become part of later. But they measure your PPS, which stands for packages, or no, no, not S, um, PPH, packages per hour. And you had to be at least 1,200 packages per hour in order to... Otherwise, you'd start getting written up or docked. So speed was very, very, very important, which I've always had trouble in jobs. Like, I can't stand when people tell me to go faster. Um, and this one, you ha literally had to, or I think you wouldn't even be working there. So you just had to discover your own ways of just being really fast. One benefit of this job is I became pretty buff. It was like Mr. Beefcake. Um, I think I still, I think I grew back my long hair. Yes. Or maybe maybe I never lost my long hair all that whole time. I don't know. But anyways, you had to take, if you wanted to get uh, a promotion, you could take these tests. You could stay after work. And it was a late night shift that I took. I was like 11 to 3 in the morning or something. And you would spend all this extra time after learning these zip code systems. Um, like if... If the zip code has a one at the end, but it's this set of numbers, then it goes to, to the pink conveyor belt. But if there's this exception, then it goes to the gray one. Um, this was to promote myself to become a sorter, which got an additional dollar per hour. And it, everybody seemed to say that it wasn't as a, it was, it wasn't as a bad job as the unloader. So I, I did that. I trained for a long time. You did get perfect on this test to test you. And uh, I became a sorter. Which was which is kind of impress like I liked the the job it was kind of interesting so there were I think yeah four four conveyor belts on the bottom so okay you're standing here there's four in the middle and four up top there's also so this is behind me there's also one up up in the front of me and there's and then the con main conveyor belt is where all the boxes are coming from coming from the unloaders. And so you are, this stuff is coming in front of you. You need to look look at the code on the top, see what zip code, and throw it into the right conveyor belt. Um, and you had like a team. They were segmented into like 10, like a 10 people. And, and they would record your accuracy on your team. And if your team was, if they could tell you weren't 100% accurate, your team leader would be all up on you guys, like making sure you're ever doing everything accurate. And it's kind of tough because there's a lot of rules to remember with the codes and stuff. But it's kind of challenging to like look at these packages and try to fit them up. So sometimes what would happen, um, the unloader would, would be too fast with, the, um, with his boxes. And the sorter, there's always one sorter with each unloader. And if you weren't fast enough to sort his packages, they would... Uh, they would start collecting up around you and to the next person, the next sorter, eventually creating like a jam where you'd make everybody stop, the entire huge line stop to, to sort out your packages. So there was a lot of pressure to not make things clog up. But sometimes the unloaders were just assholes on purpose and they would just just all of a sudden do go super fast, insano, so it would over, over clock you. And then they just like kind of wait and look at you while you're kind of sort out the mess and just kind of like smirk and like hey, hey I got you you're too slow this is like this weird dynamic that was kind of uncomfortable um they also wanted me to stay late to to freaking like 
uh, like tape up messed up boxes and stuff but I couldn't stand being there at all I didn't last too long there um, another aspect of that I just thought oh so, some people even knew to like some people would purposely throw down packages that said fragile I would see them take it and just slam it down you can even hear like a crack so you gotta be careful you write fragile um, another thing so I, I it's called UPS United Parcel Service but it actually stands for United Pot Smokers this is when I first kinda got into weed because everybody there and I'm not much of like the peer pressure kinda guy but I just was already kinda interested everybody smoked including the managers and every employee after work we'd all go in our cars ne and park next to each other and pass bowls between the cars multiple bowls it was just insane it was just ridiculous so that was pretty fun so next job I had was Target or as white people call it non French people call it Target I utterly hated this job in all capacities. I didn't, I didn't really like work for corporations because um, they seemed like to turn you into a cog, into nothingness. So even though it was a shitty place to work, I had a pretty sweet position being a, a, in the back. The back. Uh, I had to like just put things in cubbies essentially put boxes in places put random objects lamps and shit little cubbies so we can get it for later and and bring them out so people can bring them out on the floor uh, it was really easy to to jip the system if you didn't want to pull if you didn't want to bring something out you had a, like a little gun thing and it tells you like what to take out but you could just lie to it and say you took out something but it's not empty anymore so it's not empty, so there's still something there. So it's it's kind of as though you took stuff out, but you still left one, so then it's still considered to be in that location. So we do a thing called burning, where you would do that, and so you went to pull it out. And uh, we do this all the time. Another thing that people, my coworkers would do, they'd be like, oh, this M&M package? Oh, look at, oh, I accidentally cut it with my box cutter. Oh, it's open now. Well, I guess we can just eat it then. A lot of times, you have to throw away so much food. And since I was the back, I was to throw away stuff. And you just throw away, like, precious things. I had to throw away whole um, baby carriages. That's a terrible baby carriage. Um, and it felt like I was just killing children as they went into the compactor. I also had to throw away whole cheesecakes from cheesecake factories. Just they were just like expired like a day or something, but we couldn't give them away to I don't know welfare or whatever because uh, because of health shit or whatever. That's what they say, but I, I found out later in life that that's all a hoax that they actually can do. It's just kind of inconvenient for them, so they don't want to do it. They'd rather just throw it away. But uh, as I threw away the cheesecakes, I would t usually just take like one bite of the whole cake and then just throw it away. Just to get that little morsel. It was yummy. Um, after Target, so like I said, I've had millions of jobs. We're already on. It was bowling alley. We had carpet cleaning. Um, so carpet cleaning is going on while these other jobs, UPS and Target. I think I, I quit when I was, I quit, I quit the carpet cleaning during Target. And then I was living in Illinois during this whole time. And then I, I transferred Target to Target in Texas, Austin. Um, Target there sucked as well. Oh, yeah, good story here. Um, we had this, my boss, I, I had my main boss. It was super cool. He's this, he's this half Polish, half German guy that was into punk bands. And I eventually played a band with him. Uh, but then we also had the morning team boss, which was this, this Puerto Rican guy or something that just like hated everyone. He was just an, he was just a straight up asshole. We'd always make fun of him behind his back. Um, but one day I was just like pissed off at, at him or something. And I went to one of the walls deep in the back and I drew this picture of an elephant. 
It didn't look as good as this, but um, pooping on a person. The person had an eyebrow ring like that guy had, and then it had his initials, which was like I don't remember what the initials were. Um, but that was the picture, just like a straight up graffiti on the on the back of the wall. And nobody, I wouldn't think anybody would really see it or even care really. But one day I got called up to the office, and they're like, "We discovered." this image on the back of the wall did you do it no no i didn't do it no 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 well, we have cameras but we can't figure out who it was we just know they have brown hair and i was like i i might be the only suspect and it's obvious that it probably was me but i still just denied it because they're like they said you could be fired so they kind of like screw themselves at me and midian because they threatened me with all the stuff in the beginning and come on, it was just a little drawing. That guy it had it had it coming to him. So that was that. Another thing that happened was they were giving free shots or vaccinations at Target. And uh, I was really against the vaccinations. But I just wanted to tell my coworker who was in line to get it. I'm like, oh, you know, they put mercury and stuff. I was just telling her the stuff that I, that I would thought about it. And uh, there were other people in line, customers. So I guess they complained to to, to the management because they brought me into the office again. And they're like, you know, you can't share your opinions to other customers about these topics because you're representing Target. I'm just like, I wasn't telling customers. I was just telling my coworker and I was just having my own private conversation. I don't care. Other people hear shit. I don't give a shit. So like, you could be fired, but we're not going to fire you. So again, like that kind of deal. Like, we could fire you, but we're not going to. Okay. All right. We'll do it. God, I just wish I got fired. I eventually quit to work at this other job. Um, that's That was uh, that's an arcade bowling alley kind of place. 